Hi, and in today's Microsoft Word tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create this festival poster in Word. So what we'll do is we'll flick backwards and forwards between the design so that you can see what we're trying to create and then how we've created it. So the first thing we'll do is just create this background. Now, many of you may know that you can change the color of your paper, but if you do decide to save this out as a PDF, your paper color will not come out. So we've actually got to create a shape to form the background. So let's go up to insert shapes, go down to rectangles and select the square. Then we'll just click and drag. Make sure that the rectangle goes all the way across your page and to ensure it's fully covered what we're going to do is we're going to change the color and get rid of the border. All shapes are entered into Word with an outline border. Sometimes it's a bit difficult to see but what we need to do is to make sure your shape is selected, make sure you're on shape format, go to shape outline, click on the drop down and select no outline. The next thing we need to do is change this color. So we can go to shape fill here, click on the drop down and then you can select from a range of colors here or you can go to more fill colors here and you can select from this color wheel. And you've also got a number of other panels at the top here which can give you some inspiration. So I've selected the color choices for my particular poster here and I'm going to use this darker color here for my background. The next thing we're going to do is create this circular gradient at the back here. So go back to the document, go to insert, shapes, and select the circle. And then I'm going to click and drag whilst holding down my shift key because this will give me a perfect circle. I'm going to make my circle quite big. Again, when you're resizing, you need to stretch it out. If you do have a problem moving this circle around, sometimes it can get a little bit clunky. If that's the case, right click on it, go down to wrap text, and then down to in front of text, and then you'll be able to move it around. Now we're going to fully customize this bit a little bit more. So what we need to do is select the circle, make sure you're on shape format. You can either double click on the shape or go up to format pane here. Format pane will reveal this menu here, three different options at the top, and then your fill color, which is here, and your borderline color here all of which you can fully customize. So first of all, we're going to get rid of the line. And the second thing we're going to do is to turn this into a gradient. So if we just click gradient here, and as you can see, I've already set this up. So I'm just gonna move that to one side. Let's move the design. So what I've done here is, let's just move that over and you can see the circle here. The first thing you need to do is select gradient fill. So this is the solid fill, gradient fill is here. Once you have a gradient fill, you'll see there's these stoppers here and here. Now you can add more of these if you want to. So if you want to create a gradient with several different colors, you can do, but for this demonstration, we've just got two. So the first color I've selected here, if you click on this marker here, you'll see that it's surrounded by an orange outline. Go down to color, and then you can select from your color choices. So I've selected this one. And then for the darker color, I've actually selected the same color as the background so that it can blend in. So again, select the marker, go down to color and select the color of your choice. It doesn't have to be the background color, but to make this particular poster, I've selected that background color. Now you can see at the moment, it doesn't really blend in very well and the edges are quite sharp. But the beauty about these gradients is if you grab that marker and you move it to the left, you can see how that begins to blend in with the background. You can move it as much as you like, but I've just got to move it until we just get rid of that sharp outline. Perfect. So I'm going to move that down a little bit. So the next thing we're going to do is to create these flame effects here. So go back to the document, go to insert, and we're going to go to icons. Now within your software, you'll have huge amounts of icons that you can use, but actually these ones are really, really versatile and you can break them up and use just portions of these icons for your designs. 
So for this particular design, I use this icon here because you can see it has this flame here. But of all these icons, you can actually break them up into these various different pieces. So let's just insert this icon. Click Insert. Now, when you've inserted this icon, often it will go to the very back of your document. When I say that, Word works in layers, very much like Photoshop, where when you insert a shape, you will shape, insert a shape on top of each other. So this icon has been inserted behind our background shape. So select it, go to graphics format at the top here, go to wrap text, go to in front of text, and you can see then your icon will appear. Now before clicking away from it, make sure you're on graphics format again, and go along to convert to shape. When you convert this to a shape, you can begin to break this up. So let's just drag this out. I'm going to hold the shift key down again just to maintain that ratio. And then if I click, I've highlighted that flame. Once I've done that, press Command or Control C to copy it, click away from it, then press Command or Control V. And there you can see we've duplicated just the flame. What we can do is click back on that icon now and get rid of it. The next thing we'll need to do is just to increase the size of this flame a little bit more. Hold down the shift. If I don't hold the shift key down, this is what happens. Okay, to go back, press Command or Control Z. I'm going to increase the size of this like that. And then the next thing to do is to format one of these flames and then simply copy and paste them. Now there are a variety of different colors, but if we get the shadows right, the colors, the gradients on, then we can copy and paste it and just quickly whiz through and change the colors. So I'll show you how to do that now. So again, select the shape, make sure you're on shape format and that you're on your format pane icon over here. So you have this menu. Go to format shape at the top. And let's go back down to gradient. Now, at the moment, our gradient is set to radial. What we need to do is click on the drop down and select linear. And that will mean our gradient, if we just click on direction, you can see, let's just move this over, you can see all the different gradients that can be used. So if we want to go bottom to top, linear down, let's select this one. So it's darker at the bottom than it is at the top. And again, you can move the marker just to check where you want it. We move it to about there, that's fine. So the next thing is to insert a shadow. So if we go up to this icon here, effects, click on the shadow drop down, and then we can go to presets, click on this drop down menu, and you can select any number of these internal presets. You can have an external one if you want to, an external shadow, but we're going to select an internal one for this particular demonstration. And as you can see, there is a shadow inside here, but once again, we can fully customize it using these sliders. So for this particular demonstration, I'm going to take back all of the transparency and blur. I'm going to create an angle of 313 and five points, press enter. And this is the shadow I want to create for my design. So once I'm happy with my design, all I'm going to do now is I can copy and paste this by Command or Control C, Command or Control V. And as you can see, I've copied it. Or I can simply hold down my Alt key and I can just click and drag. That makes it a lot easier. What you have to be careful of though if you use that technique is that once if you've clicked and dragged you've now selected both of them. So if I do it again you can see I then make two more which is fine if you want to do that there's no problem but if not just click away and then just click back on one of them. So all we've got to do now is just move all of these down to where we want them Okay, and now we can go through and we can change all of the different colors to these flames. I'm just going to move them down. They're a little too high. Okay, 
So select one of the shapes, go back over to this format shape customization menu, go to the gradient stops and I'm just going to change this color here. I'm generally going to leave the darker color the same because it will blend into the background. Click on the drop down and then select from the different colors available. I'm just going to make these flames a little bit narrower. Okay, so once you're happy with your design, let's enter some text. So let's go up to insert, text box, draw text box, and then we'll just click and drag. Every text box by default has a white background and a black border, both of which we want to get rid of. So make sure your text box is selected. Select shape format, go to this icon here, which is the border, select no outline, shape fill, click on the drop down and select no fill. Then I'm going to change my text. So I've clicked inside my text box, my cursor is flashing, go to the home tab and then I'm going to go to my font color and then I'm going to select white and I'm going to go to my fonts and select this one here and then just increase the size of it to like 24 and just type your text. Now I'm just going to only type the text without the first letter and I'll show you how to do that. So this text is actually 80, so let's just pop in 80. Press enter. And now because we've formatted this text box, we can copy and paste it so we don't have to take the background and the border off again. So I'm going to hold my Alt key down, drag down, click away, click back on, double click inside so I can select my text, Command or Control A to select all of the text and just type letter F and then highlight the letter F and then once again I'm going to use this increase font size icon and I'm just going to keep clicking until I'm happy with that size. Just the size of my text box and then just move it up until I'm happy with where it is. Just use my down arrow. The down arrow is a bit clunky and it spaces too much. Hold the command and control key down on your keyboard and it will make finer adjustments. Once you're happy with where it's placed, then select the letter hold down your command or control key and select this section here which is your second text box go up to shape format go along to group and select group now this is all one element then go up to align and select align to center and it will place that text perfectly in the center of your page the next thing we're going to do is to introduce a border to these letters and then we can copy and paste it for the date. So make sure it's selected, go back over to your menu but this time go to text options and then let's go down to solid line here in text outline and then go down to compound types, click on the drop down and select these lines here. It's a thick thin line and then all we're going to do is we're going to go to width and then we're going to use the up arrow and we're just going to keep clicking and as you can see let's make this a little bit bigger as you can see we can now see that border which just gives a little bit more interest to that text once you're happy with that outline all we're going to do is we're going to click and drag and copy that. Click away, click back on. Now we have got a group here 
in order to enter the text we want to, we just need to ungroup this large letter and the smaller letters. So go back up to group and select ungroup. Then just get rid of this one here, press delete. If your cursor is flashing, click back off, click back on and press delete. And then for this one, double click inside, command or control A, and then type 2021. We can adjust the size of this box so it doesn't take up so much room. And then we can change the color of the text. So double click inside, command or control A, go to the home tab, go to the font color, and then select the font color of your choice. Now, whilst you've selected the text, what we can do is we can go up to the home tab, go along to this icon here, which will center your text within your text box. Then when you go to shape format and go along to align and select align to center, then we know that the text box is in the middle, but also the text is in the middle of the text box. Now we just need to move this text up. As you can see, we've moved it out off center again. So just select it, make sure you're on shape format, go to align, align to center. Just make sure that's back in the center. Perfect. Now let's add some more text. So select the text box, hold the Alt key down, click and drag. And now we're going to just pop this date in here. So click away, click back on, double click inside, Command or Control A, go to the Home tab, and let's just change the font to this one. I think this was condensed extra bold, so let's try that one. Okay. We're going to change it back to white, and then we're going to get rid of the outline here. So go back over to Text Options, and go down to Text Outline and select No Line. And then we just need to enter our text, double click inside, command or control A, and then we'll just select it all again. And then we can go to this icon here, which is decrease font size, and that's in the home tab. So let's just decrease that. And then once again, we're already in the center because we copied this text box here and that text was already centered. So all we need to do now is to go up to Shape Format, Align, Align to Center. Click away. Perfect. And then now we're going to introduce this section here. So all we need to do is once again, hold the Alt key down, click and drag. Click away, click back on that text box there. And we're just going to make the text box big enough so that when we type, the text isn't going to go over the top of these bits here. But what we'll do is we'll just make it about that big there, and then we'll see how the text lies. So let's just reduce this to 20. So I've selected the text, go to the Home tab, reduce this to 20, and I'm going to change that font from the extra bold to the condensed light. And then I'm going to delete this text. And then I'm going to copy and paste this text here. Command or Control C, Command or Control V. There we go. The great thing about these text boxes is you can manipulate them for anything you need. Just ignore that. So you can stretch them out. You can reduce the size of them. You can make them longer, smaller, so that it completely suits your needs. So let's just click away from that. There we go, perfect. So now you can either print that straight out or you can save it as a PDF. So let me just show you how to do that. So go up to File, Save As. I'm going to save mine to my desktop. I'm just going to leave it as this document too. But go down to File Format, click on the drop down and select PDF and then select export. Now the great thing about saving this as a PDF is that you can send it to a print house and they can work from a PDF. And then if I just open that PDF, just bring it up to the screen, reduce the size of it, and then there's your PDF. So I hope that's helped you today. If it has, 
please subscribe and have a great day.